There's a view on the uh, on the SpaceX Falcon 9. Looks like the crew access arm is already is already swung away from the vehicle, which would make sense because we're about uh, 12 minutes away from static fire, so we'd be 12 minutes away from launch at this point. But yeah, this is a this is a this will be a pretty big milestone to be perfectly honest because this is this is the big static fire and this is this is basically the first time this vehicle will come alive. They're they'll be going through, I imagine. I mean, they're the the booster itself will be going through the entire startup sequence and process and everything else. Um I imagine they'll be doing the same thing with the capsule. So this is almost like a wet dress rehearsal for for the capsule and and everything involved here with the uh, with this static fire test here. There's just no astronauts on board. They're not they're not there. They're not participating. So Let's see, first stage just goes into a ballistic trajectory, assuming that it expends more fuel for a shallower trajectory. Yeah, they so the Yeah, that first stage booster, yeah, once they cut off, they just let it fly ballistically until they perform the re-entry burn and then the landing burn. So basically they'll go up they'll go up past Apogee for that booster, and then as they start to come in, they'll perform the uh the re-entry burn to slow it down as it's coming in. Then the landing burn obviously will be the the final big one. So we are getting uh, we're getting very close to static fire. We're about ten minutes away from static fire. I like that we're making use of the commands now. <laughs> Yeah, and we're gonna see this thing come alive. I haven't I haven't seen any venting in this in this particular view, but I did see venting over on the the NASA space flight view uh, view that they had. Is the booster gonna be recovered just like the CRS missions? Yes. Yep. You can see Sebi's uh, message there. You can also type exclamation point booster, and uh, it'll show you uh, it'll tell you exactly where it's landing. But yeah, we're landing at sea on the drone ship. Of course, I still love you. Brand new booster, brand new capsule. It'll be heading uh, heading downrange for recovery. That's also part of that map that we showed, the Flight Club map from earlier that we showed. That's this this map right here. The blue line, essentially, that represents well, that represents coasting the blue line there. But the let's see, can I change view configuration? No, we don't want to go back. Oh, we lost it. Well, the blue line was essentially where the booster would be going. It is coasting. The the blue indicates coasting for the most part, but uh, but yeah, that's the the bo where the booster was headed. But didn't they recover those on land? Yes. Good question, Philip. So we did kind of co we covered this a little bit earlier, but uh, the boosters normally for the CRS missions, which are going to the same place, the International Space Station, they turn around and they do an RTLS landing. They return to launch site. They land them back at Cape Canaveral for this flight, for astronaut comfort, for G load purposes, for abort purposes, uh, they will be uh, they will be performing a more shallow trajectory, a shallow, a shallower flight path. And so in order to do that, they will expend more fuel and they will be further down range at booster cutoff and they won't have enough fuel to come back and land, return to launch to do an RTLS landing. So it's mostly for two reasons to, to keep the G loads lighter and specifically to keep the G loads lighter if there's an abort sequence. So if you fly, if you fly a trajectory that's more lofty and you're going up farther, if they have to abort during that sequence, the downward trajectory is similarly straight down, you know, roughly. 
and that creates high G-loads on the astronauts. If they fly a more shallow trajectory and have to abort, then the abort trajectory is also shallow, and it's not nearly as strong of uh, G-forces on the astronauts. So just because it's first crewed mission, no, this will be the case. This will be the case for all crewed missions. Uh, the, all the crewed missions, the booster will land on a drone ship out at sea, specifically because of those G forces. Could you put those command links on Discord? We get chased later. Still watching from the. Uh, if you type, if you type exclamation point commands, it should give you a link to the commands, which I um, and then. Those should be, we can post those on Discord. Uh, and if anybody thinks of any other commands that we want, we know we kind of messed around a little bit with some of the commands during the press conference. Um, we were playing with the eight ball, <laughs> which didn't give us good answers. I asked the eight ball if if the weather was going to hold up and it said nine. <laughs> so no, it's not the answer I wanted. Uh, but yeah, you can ask the eight ball questions by exclamation point eight ball. We've also got information on the booster, information on the mission. What else do we have? We got some others that are for other missions, like exclamation point Starlink. We have a link to where you can track Starlink. Uh, do you know how high the G-forces are during a standard crewed mission are? I believe they're only supposed to be between two to three Gs at most. So uh, yeah, I think I think it's just supposed to be two to three Gs at most for uh, most of the flight. And I'm pretty sure that's what they experienced even on the in-flight abort test that they did. I think at most it was only like three Gs. What are we watching here, says Baseball 1966 on Periscope. Uh, we are watching and waiting for static fire. This will be a test fire of the Falcon 9 rocket, which is out at launch pad 39A at Cape Canaveral, launch complex 39A, Cape Canaveral. Um, they... They are going to test fire the rocket in about five minutes. I could have I could have put up a countdown timer, but I don't have one prepared because I was not I was totally not expecting to live stream this. I figured we'd be done by now, but we're not. Uh, but I can get the I can get that up and ready. Maybe. See if I can do it fast enough before it, before it starts. Uh, isn't that pretty low? You talking about the uh, the G forces? Yeah, that is that is pretty pretty low for G forces. But that's the idea. That's pretty much exactly what you want is to have low G forces. Uh, let's see. What date are we on? But here and we want sixteen thirty. Three. Save it. Will that? Uh, where's my? Can I put up? What do I have to do? I have to add the countdown as a source. Ah, there we go. Except this is not. This is not time to launch. We should probably change that to uh, time to static fire isn't isn't producing on a live stream like during the live stream awesome it's so professional of me isn't it <laughs> so that's where we're, that's where we're at so we're about three minutes away roughly three minutes now this is not down to the second that countdown climber that it's count count countdown timer that's counting down to exactly 433 and zero seconds so once we hit zero we should be within within 60 seconds what kind of crewed missions are coming after this one for spacex the next thing will be the u.s crewed uh u.s crewed vehicle u.s cv one it was also just called crew one that will be the that'll be the first uh, the first crew uh, operational crewed mission to the International Space Station, which will have four astronauts on board. That's expected by the end of this year, assuming that everything with Demo 2 goes correctly. 
uh, wouldn't have it any other way, just like you not being able to talk. I know, I feel like that makes it a little more real. You, you guys know I'm producing this all by myself, so it's not, I don't, there's no crew here, there's no camera crew. It's just me. <laughs> all right, we're down to uh, about two minutes-ish. How long will they? How long will they static fire, and will it be all nine Merlin's Merlin engines? Yes, uh, it is all nine Merlin engines. They light them all up, uh, but it's only it's seconds. It's like five seconds, eight seconds. I think is I think eight seconds is is the norm. I want to say eight seconds is the normal time, but I don't I don't remember exactly. Um. I heard it's being postponed, says Mr. Giraffe. Where did you hear that from? You're talking the static fires being postponed? I've not heard anything about it being postponed. And it, I mean, there's still, the vehicle's still venting, which looks, which looks pretty, pretty normal. I mean, that vehicle venting is, is looking, that's looking pretty normal for, for static fire. So we're coming up on about a minute-ish at least a minute, no earlier than a minute. Could be more, a couple seconds more. So we're gonna have, oh, there you go. There's the big, that's the big vent, which is about 90 seconds away. So we're about, that's usually T minus one and a half minutes right there. So we might, so that static fire might be about a minute off. That's the last, that's the last big vent that happens right before ignition. It's usually a minute and a half before ignition. So I would say when that static, so uh, our T minus countdown was about a minute off based on that. So we should be, uh, if I, it's probably closer to, Uh, I don't have any I don't have any sound available for this I don't think yeah there's there's no sound on this this feed so we're at zero I think we're about a minute off I, I think it's probably gonna be right before 434 based on my clock here um, so yeah no no sound but we should have static fire any second here now we saw the last big vent we'll have the big static fire should be a, a couple of seconds it's not very long yeah water suppression system should be on at this point for sure and then we would see there it is static fire right there coming out the side couple of seconds Looking good. We didn't have an early shutoff. Then shut down. Right there. That looks like a good static fire. I mean, this is, you know, no, I'm, I'm no expert on static fires. But that looked like a good static fire. It was a good amount of time. Uh, you know, you could kind of indicate a problem if you only saw a static fire for like one second and then it shut off. That would indicate a problem. Usually about eight seconds is... The, I believe it's eight seconds is the normal time for static fire. Uh, and that did appear to be about eight seconds. Oh yeah, there you go. Sebi says it was eight seconds. So we're good. That was, that's a lot of thrust to contain for a static fire. I know, right? They, just imagine the hold down clamps that are, they got to keep that vehicle in place so it doesn't actually take off. Long static, right? Uh, that's that seemed normal to me. That seemed like a normal static fire to me. It's about eight seconds, which is what their static fires usually are, is eight seconds. So that seemed okay. That seemed normal. 